everyone finally i am here to answer your questions all the questions you left on my videos sharing how we live life offshore a lot of you saw food and now you want to walk offshore by fire by force <laughs> yeah it's a great place to walk i'll choose offshore walking offshore to walking in a cubicle in an office any day anytime and i'm glad that a lot of you are interested in that uh, my plan is to answer your questions in a series of videos i don't want to come here and say uh, and read a question answer it no that would be so boring so i've planned it out in my head at least i guess this is the best way to do that to make uh, comprehensive videos addressing various you know the questions that were asked by a good number of people in this first installment uh, i'll be answering the question about the positions that exist offshore so if you want to see every single one of those videos i plan to upload click the like button and comment below these days i guess that's the only way that youtube will be sure that you see the next one that i upload subscribing to my channel doesn't cut it these days so yeah interact with the video by liking and commenting below okay also check the description box i'll put lots and lots of information there links or any new information that comes to me you know that sense comes hourly <laughs> so yeah do that and let's go on the oil industry is vast very vast it's one of the biggest industries and i work in a tiny corner of the oil industry the oil industry you have upstream petroleum midstream downstream the upstream petroleum is where oil exploration and production happens the downstream is where the conversion of the oil gotten here into petroleum products happens refining the oil into gasoline diesel motor oils and the midstream is where the logistics of getting the oil from here to here happens whatever logistics is involved in getting the oil from the oil field to the refineries that said i work in upstream oil industry i work in oil exploration on the oil exploration you still have land oil exploration transition zone which is the swamps and offshore or marine oil exploration i have zero experience in land i have zero experience in transition zone so today i'll be focused if i all my videos will be focusing on offshore oil exploration actually you saw my offshore videos and you're interested so that's what we're going to talk about in offshore oil exploration we use ships boats vessels known as oil exploration vessels and once it's a ship any boat any ship especially massive ships and boats they have a fixed crew known as the maritime crew so on any ship it doesn't matter whether that ship is a fishing boat it doesn't matter whether it's a container boat or an oil exploration vessel you have the maritime crew that run that vessel on a seismic boat you also have the seismic crew or the technical crew on the other side the job positions that exist on the maritime side of the crew on a seismic vessel are one the captain the agabata of the maritime crew of course every vessel has to have a captain so you have the captain you have the chief officer and you have the second officers and then you have the cadet cadet is the trainee you know somebody that wants to have a career to go on to become a captain you come in as a cadet and then after that still on the bridge crew bridge crew is the people that work at that place where i went to where i told you that you have the most uh, the best view of the seas from so you have the able-bodied seamen and the bosses Everybody's seamen, as the name implies, are strong men <laughs> that help to watch, keep watch on the bridge. You know, they watch out for safety, making sure that uh, we're not colliding with even the tiniest things, tiniest obstructions at sea. Uh, they also watch out for security. You know, when they see a boat or a tiny vessel or somebody swimming to the vessel, you know, that's a security concern. They will bring it to the attention of the officer on watch. And then you have the bosons as well. Um, they also help to keep watch i don't really know the difference between the job of the ab's like i think there's a thin line between their responsibilities on board but just know that for these positions you don't really need any special qualification per se just that you have to be a strong man and then you come in and then you receive the the necessary certifications the ab's and the bosons also maintain the vessel in terms of physical maintenance 
you know, a, a vessel is a pieces of metal welded together. So it rusts, add uh, seawater to that, you know, seawater touching it, rusting can take place. So whenever they notice any part, you know, rusting, they, they chip it, file it, and then paint it with oil paint. So they do that. They also help to launch our small boats. Uh, yeah, they keep the general deck area. They are deck people. They keep the general deck area. You also often see them power washing the deck to keep it clean, the outside of the vessel. Still under the maritime crew, we have the engine department, the engine room department. You know, it's a vessel that runs on an engine. We have uh, generators because we generate our own power offshore. So you have the chief engineer who takes care of the engine, the the generators, the compressors. Yeah, because it's a seismic vessel. We make a lot of noise with our guns. And these guns, the bullet in the guns is the air. So we feed high pressure air to the guns at intervals. So we need a compressor that will be working at all times while we're acquiring the data to feed this air. So it's the engine room that takes care of the compressor. On some vessels, you have a dedicated compressor mechanic uh, who takes care of the compressor. But yeah, if they don't have it, the engine department will be taking care of that. And then you have the electrician who comes to any, if there's any electrical fault, if our washing machine goes bad you know stops functioning is one that fixes it and then you have who is known as a fitter a fitter is an offshore handyman uh, who can fix your plumbing if you see a leak in your cabin you can fix it if your bed is falling apart or something like that yeah as an example he's so a fitter usually is experienced in plumbing and carpentry work you know stuff like that you also have a cadet just like you have with the bridge crew you also have a cadet who is a trainee that wants to go on to become a chief engineer eventually in his career and still under the maritime crew we have a medic who is a doctor or a nurse who is experienced in emergency situations to take care of us you know the vessel is like a city a mini city so we have to have somebody to take care of us when we are sick when somebody is injured or yeah if there's an accident we need somebody to stabilize the patient before medivac to land and then we have the kitchen department yeah the one you guys are so interested in yeah we eat we have to eat offshore so in the galley or kitchen department we have the chief steward the chief steward is the uh, the department chief he's responsible for you know uh, planning our meals, making sure that we eat healthy, managing the inventory of the provisions and the food we have, making sure that we have enough food at all times, making sure that he orders food in time because, you know, we are far away offshore. The logistics of uh, from time of order to the, to the food coming on board may take weeks. So he needs to know the perfect time to order things, place orders so that, yeah they will arrive on time we don't want to starve <laughs> and then under here we have the chief cook you have you may have uh, several cooks depending on how many times they need to cook on board and depending on how many people they are cooking for on board so under them you have the stewards the stewards are responsible for washing the plates setting the tables bringing out the meals cleaning all the common areas like corridors our cabins uh, they don't clean outside because I, like i already said the ABs and the bosons clean outside they clean our cabins, they clean the corridors, they clean the lounges. They don't clean our workspaces. As you have seen in the videos, we clean our workspaces ourselves and we clean our changing rooms ourselves. So yeah, um, what else can you have in the maritime department? Yeah, depending on where we are working, we can have a fish rep, a fisheries representative. In a lot of places that we work in, you may have fishing activity taking place there. So we need somebody, usually a local, a, a fish rep usually hired from the country we are working in so that he can talk to the fishermen in their local language, you know, to tell them how to avoid those because fishing gear can destroy our equipment, our in-sea equipment. We also don't want to run over the fishermen, you know, some of them fish in very tiny boats. So he needs to speak with them in their local languages, you know, even probably attend their meetings before coming offshore and all that. Yeah. When we are working in Norway, we also have fish reps a Norwegian fish rep usually somebody that can you know understand the the way they work the fishermen operate offshore and then there's this maritime position that I discovered uh, when I worked in Nigeria you know this last time that I worked in Nigeria for the first time a security personnel because of the security situation in Nigeria we had security personnel on board 
you know i've never seen that elsewhere that's it for the maritime department and then you come over to the seismic or technical side of an oil exploration vessel you have the party manager or party chief at the top he's our, our gabata -bata on our side our daddy and then you have three main departments on the seismic side you have the positioning department you have the data acquisition department and you have the gun department each department has a department chief you would have often heard me saying my yoga or my chief and all that so he, they are the heads of department you know and then under them under each of them you have shift leaders or senior positioning engineers or senior navigators and then you have the operators and then you have trainees if any if uh, you have a new hire they're usually sent in and plugged in so that they can be trained to go on it's just one car it's the same career path if you're uh, working in the positioning department you can go through the ranks till the end the same thing with data acquisition department and the same thing with the gun mechanic department under the data acquisition department they have the a sub department which is data processing the clients want to see the process data right there and then as we are acquiring the data in real time you know the clients want to see the data before the vessel leaves the area in some cases we have seen situations where they see something and they say oh we want to add more lines at this particular place so that we can get a higher resolution you know something like that so yeah uh, the data processors are very important on board these days i mean i've never I don't think I've ever worked on a job where there are no data processors on board. Yeah. These two departments are where you have the engineers, the physical scientists, those that studied physical sciences, geology, geodesy, uh, surveying, especially for my department. I studied electronic engineering, but for my department, if you study geodesy or surveying, it's an advantage you know, because it's all about GNSS, GPS systems. So yeah. With gun mechanics, you don't really need to have an engineering or physical sciences degree. Uh, you all you need is to be a strong bar yeah <laughs> their job requires a lot of physical energy yeah a muscle you have to have a six pack and big muscle to be able to work in that department because yeah even though they use the uh, joysticks you know like you're playing ps5 uh, to drive the winches to when they're pulling in or deploying their guns but they still you know do a lot of physical work they carry the heavy guns and they they carry around move around uh, heavy chains and they carry the biggest monday hammer i've ever seen when they're <laughs> overhauling their guns and they carry the biggest uh, spanners you know these spanners that you have to hold with two hands there yeah. so you require a lot of physical energy to be able to work in the gun mechanic department in all my years working in this industry i've only ever heard about one woman one lady working in the gun as a gun mechanic and every other person i have spoken with have only heard about this same one woman so it's possible that she's the only female that's ever you know, like in the history of <laughs> oil exploration i don't know yeah maybe not but yeah uh, it, it's for hench strong men like somebody was asking me i've been looking for the engineering part of your job all i see you do is just tapping away at computers and running around the vessel <laughs> you know people have this uh mindset that people that work offshore you know maybe people that work on the rig that wear coveralls all the time and all that even on rigs the engineers on rigs don't really do the hard work like that the only thing is that they wear coveralls all the time you see them wearing coveralls in the control room i guess it's just because their job requires them to run down to the drill site ever so often and it doesn't make sense for you to wear your coverall each time you want to like if you go down there every 10 minutes it doesn't make sense it's, you're better off being in your coverall for the whole shift anyway but for us there are even some jobs we do for 12 hours you're online watching our job is controlling nature so yes that's only because the person wrote it like just <laughs> that just tapping away at computers looking at screens and uh, running around the vessel that's the engineering aspect okay so uh, i'm not a, a roughneck on a drill rig no I, i'm not so it's not it's not we do some hard work yeah maybe one of these days i i actually think that in that video i uploaded about 10 years ago i showed when we were working hard on the back deck we work hard on the back deck but <laughs> it's not that serious anyway i'll talk more about what they need in the job uh, in another video okay moving on we also have in the seismic department we have a somebody known as a coxswain that drives the small boats we have 
typically we have two small boats on a seismic vessel one is the frc the fast recovery craft it moves so fast speed boat that's what we launch when we want to uh, run an errand to another vessel or when we're doing crew changes sometimes we don't crew change by helicopter we another vessel comes like the chase boat we transfer people to the chase boat so we use that it's very quick like it our water taxi and then when somebody falls overboard into the water that's what is launched to speed to that person to recover the person as quickly as possible and then we have the other one known as the work boat you may have also seen it in that video i uploaded many years ago uh, that's what we used to go and work in our ec equipment we have a lot of gear cables at sea and when they have faults we, we go to sea to fix them these cables come in sections so we can actually change out a whole section in sea so these coxswains receive a special training on how to drive these small boats because these small boats have rollers that they use to pick up the cable um yeah they have winches that they use to feed the new cable new section that will be changed yeah and there has to be yeah they have just know that they have specific training for that coxswain i'll put everything on the screen and i'll put a lot more information in the description box please check it out click the title of this video below to see the description box okay the coxswain uh, because uh, he doesn't drive the small boats all the time in fact there are some places where we'll be working like in the north sea when we're working in the north sea due to constant rough weather in the north sea the seas need to be very calm when you launch them right so sometimes we only get the chance to launch the small boats once a week so what does the coxswain do at all other times when he's not working some coxswains i've seen a coxswain work with the ab's and um, the bosons you know taking care of the ship you know filing and painting and i've seen a coxswain work with the gun mechanics when they are not driving the boat okay still under the seismic side we have the marine mama observers and the palm operators in oil exploration we make a lot of noise with the air guns boom 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 and this affects the sea mammals so these people are on board to make sure that we don't disturb them they during the day the marine mammal observers they physically keep a watch watch out for these sea mammals and make sure that they're not in the vicinity i think it's 500 meters within the vicinity where we shoot before we start shooting and while we are shooting they still keep watch and if they see any mammal, because normally our noise sends them away but if there's any stubborn one <laughs> that is confused and coming close we will need to stop shooting until they've gone away or until they we've passed them giving them enough distance at night because you can't see you know you can't visually watch at night they have a an equipment the palm equipment that is in sea deployed in sea this palm equipment uh, is an acoustic equipment that receives the the noise from these sea mammals so these animals make each animal has a frequency that the noise they make falls under a specific frequency so they will be listening at night and once they hear that they will know that they are within the vicinity we do the same procedures as well just like the fish rep and the security personnel the marine mammal observers and palm operators are usually locals so search in your country if there's oil in your country and there's oil exploration going on offshore your country search for these positions there are companies that you know uh, take care of crewing of people that work in these positions so, and then you have the hse personnel yeah usually the company has one hse official on board sometimes the client the oil company that gave us the job will send their own hse representative to make sure that you know to <laughs> big brother is watching to make sure that we are adhering to all the requirements that they set for us a, a lot of these hse procedures are the same or requirements are the same across board but some companies have specific hsc they want you to adhere to yeah that's all the positions you can find on a seismic vessel in my next video i'll talk about the requirements what they're looking for the academic qualifications uh, soft skills uh, yeah all those things that they're looking for and what they're looking for in your cv as well Bye bye, see you soon. Don't forget to like the video and check the description box for more information, okay? See you soon.